So we are looking at our prerequisites, which is Windows Sub Linux that we need to install. And we have to install one and two, as well as the Docker desktop in order to run all of our containers. You will notice that our can the Docker desktop will look like this. Green means the containers are running and we can see that in VS code. So the important thing for us is that we have GitLab and our account set up. We need, you will have to sign up and I'll have a repository listed in the description, which will tell you where to go and kind of give you all the stuff you need, the compose file, um, and then all the folder structure that you'll need to have in order to get it set up. So it'll say, you know, Docker Ignition MySQL as a base startup. You can just clone it with this button here. I do HTTPS clone, which is a little easier. And you put that into your GitHub desktop. And that'll copy the code that I have into a folder local to you. And you'll add that to VS Code. So I've made this public. You can also make your repositories private, which is really useful. And we're kind of moving into our Docker desktop extension that allows VS Code to interact directly with the Docker desktop. So when we run containers, we can see the uh, running images. We can see the stored saved images. And we can also compose up, which is the way that we would deploy our compose file, which what we're doing right now is we're deploying all of them. Uh, so compose up deploys all. Since we don't have any containers on this specific instance, we're going to have to pull all the images, which is what you're seeing at the bottom. So my SQL is already downloaded and it's going to download Ignition. All right, cool. So we're going to compose down to drop all of the containers and stop the services. Uh, this will give the resources back to our computer. And we're going to do a different style here, which is compose up select services. That'll let us pick and choose our services. So we don't have to use everything that's inside the file. We can just do just the database and just the central gateway. And it'll show right here when it's starting. And then now it's actually running. So moving into the gateway web pages, we can log in to this is our central server. We also have our edge gateways in the top right and bottom right. This is set up as a hub and spoke gateway, which is actually a pretty common application where we have edge gateways on remote devices that publish uh, over MQTT up to a central broker and a central gateway where we do all of our uh, interface design and development. Okay. One thing you'll also notice with these uh, examples I've given you is that I also included the uh, engine and transmission modules for MQTT uh, sending data, receiving data. Um, you'll have to set up your own maybe cloud broker, uh, either HiveMQ or something else. So this is kind of showing you how I set up SQL Workbench to connect to my Docker image. So localhost, and I've already set the password, which is given for the SA login. And we can go to our tables and we can select rows kind of see what's in there. It's an empty database, but it gives you an example of what to do. So this is an example of our hub and spoke architecture now that we saw in our gateway web pages and what we're going to configure for our designers. So we need to set up all of our designers. The central is going to be the easiest because it's on the default 8088 port. We're going to add that. Then to add the other two, we need to actually specify a different port because for Docker, we have the port of the computer pointing to a different port, which is 8088 on the Docker container so that we can run three side by side on the same computer. So we have 8089, we're going to set up 8090, which will be gateway edge two. Okay, right now we have all three. I'm going to open up a central and an edge gateway. Now with both of these designers, all of the credentials you need, the login is all inside of the compose file. Uh, in the future in production, I would definitely recommend having a secrets folder so that none of that login credentials is passed with your file. But for the purposes of this video, it should be just fine. So with the edge, it comes with one project. You can't really change it. With the gateway, you can create as many projects as you want. 
So we're going to set up a new one for this example and just kind of show you that you can pretty much do the same thing in both. There are some limitations on the edge, like we don't have databases, but we can do scripting, we can make a vision or a perspective application, and then you can actually do the same thing in the, in the large um, central gateway. So just kind of showing that. Let's say you want to make your own Docker Compose file. So to make a Compose file, we would move into search for our image, find our image, and then usually most images will have some kind of guide to show you how to make your Compose structure. So I have an empty Compose file here, and I want to show you how I take that string. So I'm going to copy and paste it here. And take that string, I got P for port. So we're going to find our port and our structure, and we're going to copy that there. Next step is we're going to name it. So this is our volume. So we're going to copy our volume and put it under our volume section. So V means volume. And I am going to copy that down here under volume so that the system knows what the name is and what it's attached to. We start up. Last, we're going to copy the name of the image, not the image of the image, the name of our service. And then lastly, we're going to tell it this is the image I want you to pull from the Docker Hub. So that's the path in Docker Hub to get to that image. And it's going to show up here when we pull it. And right now we don't have anything running, but we're going to compose up and you will see it pull down the node red. It's actually pretty quick. Once it's created, the service is available and we should be able to get to that. Shows it in the running containers and on the web page, we should be able to go to localhost 1880 and actually get to the node red.